Uh, dear audience, I have just added some sounds and that's why I need, to be sure, a little technical help. <laughs> it was an idea to have sound. Uh, from the very beginning of my music archaeological career, I strove deliberately to make the results of my research come alive for the general public, both children and adults. This, I strongly believe, should be the duty of every researcher, the so-called third mission of academia. Indeed, music archaeology has an exclusive capacity as a, sound, as a tool in the third mission. Our topic involves a source material that we can bring to life because it can sound. Music archaeology is an instrument for both art and knowledge. An illuminating example of my public outreach uh, is a program in tone, word and image about the Royal Swedish flagship Kronan, the crown, that exploded and sank in the Baltic Sea in 1676. I used the title also Early Music in Deep Water in the very first media release and that became a public relations success because I was contacted by television, newspapers, broadcasting, they thought it was all about a general crisis for early music in Sweden because of lack of money. <laughs> the program is based on underwater archaeological finds of musical instruments and sound tools on the Kronan wreck and is supplemented with knowledge from various historical sources. My paper will focus on the background of the program and the procedure that is at first research and scientific presentation and then the outreach, the third mission. Let's move back in time to 1676. Sweden is, since several years, one of the most powerful states in Europe. This is Sweden's so-called great power era. Sweden has many enemies, among them Netherlands and Denmark. On the 1st of June this year, the Swedish fleet is sailing northward off the east coast of the Swedish island of Öland in the Baltic Sea followed by a combined Danish and Dutch fleet. The Swedish fleet is extremely impressive. 66 ships. Most impressive is the Royal Swedish flagship Krona. She was one of the largest warships in the world, a manifestation of Sweden's great power era. On this very day, Kronan made a bad turning maneuver in a battle between the Swedish and the Danish Dutch fleets. Fire broke out on board, reached the powder magazine, and the great ship exploded and sank. 800 men went down with her, as many as the whole population of a middle-sized town at that time in Sweden. Only 42 men of the crew were saved, among them a musician, a trumpeter. For over 300 years, Kronan lay untouched at the bottom of the Baltic Sea until she was located in 1980 and the underwater excavations began, which are still going on each summer season. The Kunan wreck is an extremely important find, a Pompeii of the Baltic Sea, with its abundant equipment, its large company, and its hierarchical social structure. The ship was a society in miniature. 
Among the amount of finds that have been excavated so far on the wreck are, as already said, musical instruments and other sound tools, intact or in fragmented form. This bell was an important signal instrument on board. It was used in connection with the sailors' watches, which were then, as they are now, of four hours' duration. It was also used when the ship was anchored and there was poor visibility and for other emergency and warning signals. Important signal instruments on board were also various whistles. This one is of lead. The boatsman was responsible, responsible for sails and rigging. His sharp whistle signals drowned the soundscape that was composed of the sea, the wind, the sails, the ropes, and so on. Three fragments of a trumpet and one nearly intact trumpet, although battered, were found thus far, all made of brass. Made by Mikael Nagel in Nuremberg, a super instrument. This is unique, a preserved binding cord which we do not find on early trumpets on land. And several fragments of stringed instrument, parts of a bass viola da gamba, parts of violins. Most sensational is an intact violin in its box, although in parts. Also pieces of a drum skin, drum beaters, a whistle of animal horn, a small bell, an ocarina of clay, and fragments of what are supposed to be flute instruments were found. Trying to answer questions about the use and function of the musical instruments and about the users and the various soundscapes on board, I initiated an interdisciplinary research project that included people from such disciplines as maritime history, naval history, musicology, organology, conservation, and of course, underwater archaeology. Thus, the role of music archaeology in this context is rather to be considered a complementary discipline. Studies of Swedish marine archives resulted in information that five trumpeters and a timpanist were posted to Kruna. They were professional musicians, high-ranked, and their tasks on board were to play ceremonial signals and orders and to play together with the ship's bell every morning and evening at regimental prayers. What about the string instruments? All of these were found near the officer's quarter of the ship, and we suppose that they were played by the noble marine officers who usually were skilled amateur musicians on the violin, viol, lute, and flute, but they probably performed only when the ship was anchored or was docked in a harbor. There are, of course, several musical instruments preserved on land from the 17th century. What is special in this case is that the instruments from Kunan are part of an underwater archaeological find complex that can, moreover, be exactly dated. To sum up, uses and functions, ceremonial music, entertainment music, work music, signals and orders, natural sea sounds. The results of their research project were presented at an international music archaeological uh, conference in Stockholm in 1984 and then published in this volume. This is a fine from violin fine from uh, Krona. Anybody interested can buy it cheaply so then I can buy some more glasses of wine this evening. <laughs> Uh, I have brought some books with me. There are also other music archaeological articles on other topics. Next step was the third mission, that is to present the research results to the general public, children as well as adults, scholars and laymen. Indeed, the project was a scoop 
Kunan, and I was lucky to receive financial support. I got into contact with professional early music musicians who perform on such types of instruments that were found on the Kunan wreck. And we founded an ensemble that I gave the name Ensemble Mar Balticum, Kunan's present day house band. I wrote a manuscript including possible muse music to be performed and including images together with a photographer who also made a slide show. Two replicas of the Nagel trumpet were made in Basel, Switzerland, and the costume historian created such a costume that the trumpeters hypothetically might have been dressed in. Then there was a moment of magic. You see, when the costumes were already made on solid historical grounds and used several times by the musicians, this one scarlet jacket some years later was found on the Kronan wreck. Naval historians interpreted this jacket as belonging uh, to um, a trumpeter, not any officer, and thus defined, confirmed, the costume historian's theory, perfect archaeology. Two minutes. Three. Uh, how did they sound, the trumpeters? The various ceremonial signals were probably played from memory. Anyhow, there are some anonymous handwritten trumpet signals preserved in Sweden from the 17th century, and they are used. Please, can you uh, press on uh, that? that is, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, yes, to illustrate how it sometimes may have sounded. Close it and I tell you. Damn. Stop, stop. Yes, uh, the program that I wrote included nine musicians, that is, the ensemble Mar Balticum, one large screen for a slideshow and a professional actor. The slideshow is a mix of fictional uh, images and uh, of actual finds and images from Kronan's time, uh, like uh, uh, this uh, one. And um, uh, here are the musicians, the ensemble Mar Balticum, I, I quite soon finished. Uh, the actor, uh, because there is an actor, uh, uh, he does many different roles from a lecturer about Kronan to a drunken sailor. And he enters his different roles by using another hat or no hat or a cape, etc., which he quickly is changing to behind the screen. Uh, the musicians do not have any monologues or dialogues. They just perform music and sing, but also act as different people in different uh, situations on, on board. Here they are seamen. Uh, the, the screen, the, the photograph is uh, of a reconstruction of Kronan's gun deck made by general, uh, uh, made by naval uh, historians. And here we are in the Admiral's Saloon. What music then? Here we have another example if we have uh, time, just a uh, short. Here. Yeah. 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 Soon stop. Yes, I think we have to stop. And, uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Now we can uh, just fade out now. I, I am so Yes. Stop. Yeah. Uh, that's one example. Um, I have some more, but uh, we have no time. Finally, the Kunan program. This is from a poster in German was inaugurated in 1989 and has since then been periodically performed in all Sweden and in many other countries in Europe, including Russia and parts of it in USA. The skilled actor speaking either in German or in French or in English. 
So hundreds of performances in schools, in museums, in concert halls, and several other venues. And the music that we use was uh, uh, recorded on a CD, unfortunately sold out. So I think I have to stop now. Thank you.